Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. And in episode 240, I want to talk about the recent tragedy in Baltimore with the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Now, I used to live in Baltimore. It was my first assignment out of college uh, with my former employer. Um, I drove over this bridge on a regular basis and am quite familiar with its location, uh, length, uh, and the difficulties that this creates with the supply chain due to it blocking access to the port of Baltimore. There's no doubt that the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge was a significant event. And despite its severity, it resulted in a less deadly outcome that might have been expected under other circumstances. And there are several key reasons that contributed to minimizing the number of casualties. So let's break those down. The first one is that they had a plan. Uh, they were able to execute very swiftly some emergency protocols on how to close the bridge, and they were able to stop traffic going onto the bridge just moments before the collapse. There was a mayday call from the cargo ship Dolly, which had um, suffered a complete blackout and lost propulsion and control. We still don't know exactly what happened. But their a mayday call allowed for an immediate emergency response, and that response helped prevent additional vehicles from going on the bridge at the time of the collapse. The second thing that contributed to the lesser number of casualties here was luck. It was the time of the incident. This collapse occurred about 1.30 in the morning Eastern time when there's not as much traffic on that highway going across the bridge. And that naturally limited the number of potential victims on the bridge. Number three was the quick notification. The ship's crew issued the mayday call in order to make others aware that they had lost control of the vessel or they were having trouble with the vessel. Uh, and they also attempted to drop anchor as a part of their emergency procedure. But of course, that takes some time. Um, the bridge's immediate closure to traffic as a result of that mayday call really underscores the importance of emergency preparedness and quick communication and backup communication methods in crisis situations. Number four were some structural and safety improvements that we hadn't talked uh, that we talked a lot about uh, in this, but it really relates to the harbor itself. Over the last several years, the port had adapted to accommodate larger cargo ships. Uh, they had installed new cranes and dredging the harbor. And while the bridge was exempt, it was designed before our current bridge regulations that might have played a factor in preventing the bridge collapse, um, such as advanced protection systems. Um, it was grandfathered in from those requirements. Um, but the incident really highlights the critical role that infrastructure resilience plays in these situations and the need for ongoing evaluation and enhancement of safety measures. Even if the bridge was older, there could have been some mitigating things done to prevent this type of a collision, and they weren't done. Um, and you know, hindsight's always 2020, but those things stand out. Number five, after the disaster, of course, there's been an outpouring, a swift pledge of support from state and federal levels, including a promise from President Biden that the federal government would cover the cost of replacing the bridge. And that really helped um, provide a coordinated recovery process. That support facilitated uh, the initiation of rescue operations with local, state, and federal resources, and it set the groundwork for the bridge's reconstruction, and that will mitigate long-term impacts on the community and the regional infrastructure. The bridge collapse, to me, serves as a stark reminder of the complexities involved in managing and safeguarding critical infrastructure, and it raises our awareness of older critical infrastructure that may not be built or engineered or protected the way things would be if we were building it today. It also underscores to me the importance of emergency response planning, the need for continued improvement and practicing through exercises, and the really important role of timely coordinated communication and action that helps minimize um, the human and material loss during such unforeseen events. The bridge collapse also raises a number of business resilience or business continuity challenges. The first is supply chain disruption. Um, this bridge was a crucial transportation link in and of itself uh, on the highway. 
but it's and it's collapse dis- disrupts the flow of materials and goods um, for companies relying on ground transportation because they'll need to find alternate paths and some of these paths are going to be all the way around the city the other way and I can tell you from living there and going someplace over here and needing to go right over there going 25 30 miles out of my way would not have thrilled me uh, at all and would have made that a lot more challenging that's going to lead to delays and increased transportation costs Um, so it really the incident underscores the vulnerability of our supply chains to infrastructure failures and the importance of having some contingency plans in place uh, and of course the the cost increase in doing so. There's also the issue of the Port of Baltimore is now blocked, at least it appears for larger vessels to get through. That is the focus of the recovery right now in terms of getting the port reopened. The bridge, of course, is going to be a much longer term task to replace. But being able to uh, get uh, ocean traffic, ship traffic, in and out of the Port of Baltimore is critical. It's one of the largest ports uh, on the East Coast of the United States. The collapse has implications beyond these immediate transportation and logistics concerns, though. It will affect the regional economy. It will potentially lead to a slowdown in local business activities and impacting workers, particularly those in construction, transportation, and shipping. Um, for the obvious reasons we just talked through. Businesses may need to consider these broader impacts, uh, including potential labor shortages or shifts in the labor market due to the incident. Businesses involved in the rebuilding effort, of course, might experience a quick upturn in demand, underscoring the importance of adapting to changing market conditions. Um, Businesses should think about their exposure to infrastructure-related risks and consider strategies like diversifying their supply chain routes, investing in inventory buffers, and exploring alternate transportation modes. Um, Engaging with local and state authorities to stay informed about the progress of reconstruction efforts and potential support measures can also provide valuable insights for planning and decision making. So this is obviously one of the more recent Uh, serious critical infrastructure disasters that we've seen. I hope this has given you some insight into why it didn't have quite the human impact that we would have expected such a bridge collapse to have and some of the challenges that businesses are faced with. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.